there's kind of some two big components that I consider in the first is actually, even though that like hard water, um, some of those chemical components don't necessarily cause growth and health performance for pigs directly, they can cause with certain conditions like hard water and an elevated pH in this water quality, they can cause mineral scale to build up on the inside of those water lines. So we can have issues with our water nipples, we can have uh, decreased diameter in those water line pipes. And so that can actually restrict water access to pigs. And so even though they don't have those, um, you know, direct health effects, it still can overall, you know, it can still affect the water consumption of the pig and the water availability. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we welcome Dr. Gabby Dawn, a swine veterinarian and technical project specialist with Iowa State University College of Veterinary Medicine. So Gabby, before we get started today, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Absolutely. So I'm a swine veterinarian and technical project specialist. And I uh, had originally graduated from Iowa State um, from vet school back in 2021 and then obtained my master's and PhD actually this past spring um, from Iowa State as well. And so really my research has been focused in waterline uh, biology or waterline biofilms, water quality, and then water biosecurity as well. Yeah. So going off that, it looks like a lot of the work that you've done at Iowa State is involving water quality and its importance in swine production. So I guess just to simply start us off, why is water quality so important for pigs? Yeah. Water quality is so important for pigs is it's a big part of our pig production, maintaining uh, growth performance, all of those things. And pigs actually will consume two to two and a half times their amount of um, water versus like their feed by volume actually. So it's quite a bit, like you think about it, thousands of gallons are going into a farm every single day. And so we can have some biosecurity concerns. And also, you know, we consider, does it actually affect uh, pig health and performance, especially when we have challenges with water quality? Um, however, some of the research has actually demonstrated that, you know, really pigs can tolerate a wide range of water qualities, especially for um, health and performance, uh, as far as that goes. Although there are some parameters that they do have issues with osmotic diarrhea, such as sulfates or high total dissolved solids in water quality. Um, and so really we, we think about, um, we don't really think about water until we have problems with it usually. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Yeah, I would agree. When it comes to looking at the six essential nutrients for pigs, water definitely seems to get the least amount of attention when it comes to nutritionists and producers. So I guess if we are going to start paying closer attention to that, the first question we got to ask is, how do we monitor it? Yeah, so there's a lot of different components of water quality that we can monitor. And so the first is going to be those chemical components, which is where a lot of the research has been completed before and demonstrated that generally pigs can tolerate a wide range of water qualities, especially chemically. However, there are a couple of other parameters that we monitor is like the physical characteristics. So water turbidity, like coloration, um, you know, some of those items like water temperature. And then you also have um, your microbiological components, which is really the the um, aspect of water quality that I've been really focused in, in diving into and, and trying to understand better. As we can have issues with biosecurity, you know, we're administering medications through our water lines, um, and those microlog microbiological components can have an influence on some of those things. So when looking at the water quality that's kind of within the swine production world today, how is the water quality currently impacting swine health? Yeah, so there's kind of some two big components that I consider in the first is actually, even though that like hard water, um, some of those chemical components don't necessarily cause growth and health performance for pigs directly, they can cause with certain conditions like hard water and an elevated pH in this water quality, they can cause mineral scale to build up on the inside of those water lines. So we can have issues with our water nipples, we can have 
uh, decreased diameter in those water line pipes. And so that can actually restrict water access to pigs. And so even though they don't have those, um, you know, direct health effects, it still can overall, you know, it can still affect the water consumption of the pig and the water availability. Um, the other piece is the microbiological component. And so, you know, I had mentioned that it could be a potential biosecurity risk. Um, most of our farms have well water sources or they'll have surface water sources. And so there are some pathogens that we can consider, you know, that could be potentially transmitted through the well or through um, surface water. And, uh, you know, based on my research and what I found, I've actually found a pathogenic E. coli um, in the waterline biofilms themselves. So the biofilms on the inside of those water lines, that mineral scale, um, you know, fuels those biofilms because it's nutrients there. And then we also add nutrients into the system. So we add, um, you know, electrolytes, um, we add vitamins, medications, oral vaccines. And so all of that can contribute to biofilm problems within a farm. And so if we're not uh, cleaning and routinely cleaning and disinfecting water lines, we can have uh, biofilm issues and, and it could pre present a biosecurity concern. Gotcha. So like you said, yeah, cleaning out those biofilms seem to be at least the first or one of the heaviest impacts of steps in improving water quality because you can wash the barn all you want and get it sparkling clean, disinfected. But cleaning out the inside of those water lines is going to be a completely different step. So I guess, how can we impact waterline biofilms enough to improve the water quality on farms? Yeah, so what I recommend, especially on the grow finish side, is applying a terminal line disinfection. So what that is, is a higher concentration uh, terminal line cleaning where you, um, you know, apply a chemical um, for a certain amount of time when there's no pigs in the barn, when the barn's empty. And then, so that really attacks the mineral scale and the biofilms and, and allows, um, you know, for a complete removal of that. Then what I recommend is once pigs are in the farm uh, to apply a continuous disinfectant um, because then that can manage the biofilm regrowth as, you know, biofilms will regrow even in the face of a continuous disinfectant. So how do we best manage that? And so by disinfecting that water, um, we can, you know, mitigate against that risk. And so we're inactivating any organisms that could be shed from, the, from that biofilm. Gotcha. And you mentioned the wheat to finish farms. And like you said, they have the luxury of being an all in all out system. So during the downtime when there's no pigs in the barn, yes, it's easy to, to clean out those water lines. So how would you go about then cleaning out the water lines on a sow farm that have more of a continuous flow through the barn? Yeah, the sow farms are a little bit more challenging just because their current water, most farms, their current water systems aren't really designed to be cleaned. And so um, often what I recommend is, you know, can we make some adjustments so that we can treat the farrowing rooms when there is some downtime um, there? And so we don't really have a lot of knowledge on waterline biofilms and, and sow farms and honestly, and we need to finish sites um, either. And so there's a huge um, area of, you know, research interest that we need to kind of evaluate um, there. But I think because the sows are more susceptible, you know, as they're farrowing, and then we have, um, you know, neonatal piglets as well. I think it's important that we have an opportunity to apply a terminal line disinfection, um, especially in those farrowing rooms. And then you can use a, a continuous uh, disinfection um, agent there for, for treating the water, um, either to gestation or to um, those sows in farrowing. However, the thing is with... Um, with continuous water line disinfection, it needs to be an EPA approved product um, for swine drinking water. And that's a big one because if we uh, have a product that's not EPA approved, we can run into some issues um, just because we can't utilize those products um, you know, off label. And so we can run into some regulatory concerns there. Gotcha. And final question I have for you is if producers want to take that step and really impact the water quality that they have in their barn, What's the first step that they should take? Yeah, I think the first step is to really just to start monitoring your water quality. Like I had mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, you know, really we have um, it's an overlooked topic. And so we just kind of as long as the pigs have water, we don't really investigate it any further. And so I think the first step is really um, monitor your water quality more frequently. So once a year is uh, preferable. However, um, if you can uh, have the resources to test more frequently, that would even be better. Um, because ultimately, you're going to use those water quality results to determine what actions need to be taken to improve my water quality. So such as, you know, do I have a biological problem? Do I need to apply um, a disinfectant? And then it also helps 
which disinfectant do I use? Because some disinfectants work better in some water quality conditions than others. And so um, really important to just start monitoring it um, so that you can see how, how water quality changes over time too and how it could potentially impact the pig. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Gabby, for being a guest on today's show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm actually, I'm really fortunate to be able to speak at uh, the Kevin Intestinal Health Symposium um, in October this fall. And so if you're, if any of the listeners are interested in attending the virtual Kemen Intestinal Health Symposium, you can visit kemen.com slash symposium uh, to register for free, um, actually, too. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.